Brexit and the UK's potential loss of passporting rights are bound to have a big impact on private banking and on European financial centres that aim at attracting such businesses away from London. Which of these IFCs will be most successful in this endeavour? Uh, I'll be asking Yuri Bender, the editor of PWM, uh, which is a sister publication to the banker. Yuri, thank you for joining me. So uh, tell me which financial centres have been more perhaps aggressive and also potentially more successful in this bid? Well, there's a lot being talked about all of these areas, but how much activity there's actually going to be is, a, is another matter, really. But if we look at who's in the frame to win some of this business from London, and London is very much, um, I, I, I think there's almost a fatalistic attitude. They know that the jobs are going to be lost here. How many is another question. Well, it's probably 10,000 minimum, 60,000 at the top end, somewhere in between the two is a likely figure. New York is definitely going to gain. But if we look at Europe, more on the doorstep, who's marketing themselves quite aggressively? Luxembourg, the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg, tiny country, just an hour's flight away from, from city airport. And they're, they're coming here in, in um, if not in great numbers, they're, they're coming here regularly to market themselves as a funds hub for distribution to Europe. And they're not just looking at London, funny enough. They're looking at Asian banks. They're looking at American banks. So they're really seeing this as an opportunity to uh, perhaps um, uh, um, raise a bit the, the game and their status as well as uh, an asset management. Private banking also, would you put them in that category? Uh, hub in Europe. Um, so definitely they have a lot of... Um, asset management um, skill and expertise and tradition even. Uh, but then when we uh, talk to, to uh, our contacts in the market, a lot of them are raising doubts about the language. A lot of the meetings perhaps in Luxembourg are still being held in, in French, not in English. Uh, the size of the place, the, the need for potentially moving families and setting up uh, um, a life there, including uh, finding the right school. So d how would you rate uh, Luxembourg's actual um, ability to succeed in this bid? Well, the, I mean, you're raising the question of that whole ecosystem, the, the schools, the culture, the, the restaurants, the leisure and, and, and sports facilities. Luxembourg's improved a lot since I first went there 25 years ago. And if we look at that Kennedy Avenue, if we look at all the, 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 the building that's going on there, I mean, there's huge investment there in infrastructure. In terms of languages, I don't think people will have too many problems with with the with with the English language there. I mean, the, um, Dublin. Uh, um, the, the, a lot of the American banks do prefer Dublin, especially for hedge funds and the and the alternative assets industry. But they see a cultural link there, and obviously English is very much the the first language there. But I don't see too many language problems with Luxembourg. What what I do see is the. The, as, as you alluded to, the recruitment of staff um, in, in, in the future. Um, if all the initiatives that Luxembourg is talking about, if they all actually come off, they may struggle to get all the staff necessary to fulfil all those commitments. OK, so that's something for Luxembourg to focus on. You mentioned Dublin, again, uh, it's been uh, all over the media um, and in uh, corporate um, announcements about uh, as a potential destination um, and an alternative to Brexit London. And you've covered the benefits of uh, and the, the, uh, the pros of uh, setting up shop in Dublin. But what are the financial centres, do you think, uh, which are perhaps less known to wider audiences, are also uh, potentially interesting? Well, coming up on the blind side, is Madrid, the, the Spanish capital. And it hasn't really been traditionally thought of as a major financial centre. But if we look at UBS, they're looking at it potentially basing several hundred more people there. And Madrid has, it's been quietly working on its act. It's been um, the, the infrastructure there, there's been, there's been investment there. If we look at that whole area of n northern Madrid, north of the um, Paseo de Castellana. The, um, it's I mean, quite a, a, a derelict area, but now the, the investment is, is going to be going in there. Um, BBVA alone, the Spanish bank, are going to put um, 6 billion euro into that project in terms of real estate investment. We're talking about new metro stations, diverting railway lines, um, massive um, uh, pro projects there. And when that is, is finished, 
that there will be capacity for an extra 40,000 new employees there, and a lot of those in financial services. When you talk about Frankfurt, Paris, Amsterdam, they would have trouble absorbing those numbers. They're already perhaps almost at capacity. Almost, yes. W when it comes to those, those kind of numbers, mm -hmm. I don't think those cities can, can absorb them. But Madrid, with that investment in the infrastructure, with this major real estate projects going on, Madrid could well surprise us. Look at the rentals there. They're probably a third of what they are in, in Paris. And then the number, you've got 15 universities in Madrid, at least three business schools. The, um, that, that those kind of um, statistics, and, and, and if we look at the, the workforce, I think it's um, something like 46% of the, the, the workforce are, are graduates. Very impressive statistics so for Madrid. The potential is there to create the right ecosystem for an even larger financial centre. Madrid obviously already potential. is quite, quite an interesting the and The potential and is huge in, in Madrid, absolutely massive. Then further to the east. Yes, I was about to ask yes. you. Let's look at, at uh, Eastern Europe. Further to the east, Warsaw. Um, it's, um, it, it feels like it's booming at the moment. It has the growth is higher than other European capitals. And as the 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 head of the um, investment agency said to me the other day, we're talking about West European quality at East European prices. And I think there's so again, something cost, to be said for important. that. Cost is very important. Cost is very important. But language as well. I mean, the 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 level of the the language expertise. I I, I got talking to one guy in um, in Warsaw, and I said to him, "Which part of Poland are you from?" And he said to me, "Ealing Broadway." <laughs> and um, you know, we obviously the, the, there's a lot of there's a lot of people who've who've lived in and and worked in the UK, and many of these are now are now coming back to 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 Poland, and whose future very much is in doubt because of Brexit. So. Uh, we're probably going to uh, see, anyway, an, an outflow, perhaps, of uh, uh, Europeans back to their regional um, cities, maybe, with Brexit, and also, perhaps, also an outflow of businesses from London. So we shall keep on uh, monitoring this area. Very, very interesting indeed. Thank you, Yuri, for your comments. Thank you.